like to express my sincere gratitude to Gil Chesterton and to my brother Niles for doing such a great job of filling in for me. I really appreciate it, guys. <laughs> well, Ross, now that I'm back to normal and feeling great, who's our first caller? We have Sonia from Auburn on line three. Let's just hear what Sonia has to say. I had a dream. I had a dream. They are plotting against me. Oh, now, now, Dr. Crane. I thought we went over this already. It's just your fever talking. Well, that's just what you want me to think. You're probably in league with Niles. I know about the two of you. Oh, you pretend not to know, but you know. I'm gonna get back down there and take my show back. But you can barely function. Yes, well, these prescriptions will take care of that and more. Now, here, run down to the drugstore. Post haste. Cider cane? This'll have you high as a kite. That's only until I take a couple of these. <laughs> oh, now, Doc, I really don't think you're in Thank you. Can... But the moment I give a fig about what you think is the day that England produces a great chef, a world-class bottle of wine, and a car that has a decent electrical system. <laughs> you know, being a healthcare provider, I try to be sympathetic towards my patients, but I have reached the end of my tether with you, Doctor. You are by far the most ungrateful, disagreeable, self-centered, whiny fusspot I've ever had the misfortune of dealing with. I've had patients on their deathbeds who were more considerate and a damn sight more jolly, too. As far as I'm concerned, you can lay in those sweaty sheets till you're one giant bed sore. Are you done? Yes. And scurry on down to the drugstore, get those filled while I get dressed. <laughs> 